Well, we're going out on the phone line right now. we got Mark Recchi with us, Pittsburgh Queen, uh, Penguins assistant coach. Mark, uh, welcome to the Rod Peterson Show. Thanks, Thanks for the time today. Oh, no problem. My pleasure. Uh, appreciate having you on. And Mark, let me ask you, what is life like for you at the moment? It's been a few weeks now of being shut down. Uh, how are things with you, your family, and the people of your area? Um, well, it's, it's, uh, I'm actually kind of embracing this and, you know, I'm making the best of it with my, you know, family and kids and doing all that stuff and taking long walks and working out a little bit. And so, it, it, you know, it hasn't been too bad. It's starting to get a little bit stir crazy now, but, uh, you know, obviously we've got to stay inside and do our thing here. And, but, uh, you know, family's good and just trying to keep busy. You know, an interesting question I'd have for you is because we know a lot of NHL players that are, if anything, finding their time long, they're bored, and trying to stay in shape. But i got to ask you, Mark, as a coach now, what about the mental aspect of it for your guys? Um, are they being helped by somebody? Are you involved in that? Because you know how serious of a situation that could be if it's not handled correctly. Yeah, there's no question. Yeah, we have our... Uh... We have a lot of dialogue going out to our players quite a bit. Our offices are strength conditioners. We have a, a, a couple of uh, guys who work on the mental side as well and uh, are trying to keep them focused. We're actually starting meetings with them tomorrow. Uh, we're going to kind of have a meeting once a week with the players to get keep them engaged and, and keep them part of uh, – you know, their, their thought process. And, you know, if there is an opportunity we, we, we get to play, then, then hopefully, you know, we've done our stuff, we've done our work and we're able to uh, jump on board and, and, and just get, you know, um, be prepared mentally as much as physically. Of all your years with the Penguins, both player and coach, where would you rate this year's team? I mean, you're always in the middle of it, but, uh, you know, let's just assume you're getting back playing. Where do you guys rate on the contender st- scale in your mind? Well, I think we're, we're, I think we're, we're a real good contender. Um, you know, we, you know, we, we, the way we played all year as a team, we had a little bit of a, you know, hit a little bit of a bump in the road near the last, before we, uh, before we had this uh, unfortunate pandemic, but, you know, we were starting to trend back up the other way, and we had, uh, you know, in 12 games, and I, th- I think we were going to go in the right direction. And, and um, you know, I think we're, you know, obviously when you have Sidney Crosby and Evgeny Malkin and, you know, the goaltending we have and the defensemen we have, and, you know, and, you know, obviously we, we, we go for it, and, you know, we added Zucker, and, you know, there's an opportunity to get Gensel back now. So there's, uh, you know, there's a lot of good positive things right now. Hey, Mark, it's Darren Dupont here. Um, we heard Sid, you know, talk about he would be open to playing some regular season games, you know, and not just jumping right back into the playoffs. What would you guys need to be ready? What would it look like uh, coming back? Because this is something that's kind of unprecedented. Yeah, you know what? It's like I said, that, that's why we're doing some stuff mentally and, and, you know, to try and keep the players engaged and, you know, we'll, we'll engage them in conversations and, you know, whether it's, even if it's once a week, at least to keep in their mind, uh, you know, getting their mind back on the game. And, you know, I think the team that's um, done the most work um, away from, the, you know, away from this and, and stays prepared as much as they can, if we do get the opportunity to go back and the team that does it, I think is going to have a big advantage. Mike, I got to ask you a couple of questions outside of the current team. Number one, we had producer Clark asked you uh, if you were still involved in the Kamloops Blazers ownership team, and uh, you are. Uh, your thoughts on the WHL and where it sits right now and, and the fact that the Blazers got a pretty darn good hockey team. It'd be nice to see this season. Uh, well, I guess it's been officially canceled now for them, unfortunately. But how, how that sits with you as an owner of the Blazers? Well, it, it's too bad that, you know, I mean, you know, it's just heartbreaking for – you know, our, our, our team there, the, the 20 year olds, especially, you know, this is, this is not how they want to end their WHL career. And hopefully they, they move on to better and bigger, bigger things and, and pro and, and all that. But, you know, it's really heartbreaking. I know the players and the coaching staff and management there were, were really, really excited about, uh, you know, playoffs moving forward and, and getting ready. And, you know, we see it, you know, we'd won the, the BC division. So, you know, they had something to be proud of and, and, uh, build upon and, and, uh, you know, we were getting our goaltender back right at the end there, and he, he played a couple games right before this all happened. And, and you know, so there was a lot, of, you know, there was a lot of disappointment. We had a call with the players, um, uh, whatever, a week, 10 days ago, 
um, Shane Doan, myself, and, and um, uh, um, Tom Valardi, we got on a call with the players, all the players, and just, you know, thanked them. And, you know, this is obviously not a great way to end, but, you know, thanking them for their, for their, for their year. You know, it's uh, the funny side of that. I guess at least you're getting a banner to put up in the in the roof of Sandman Center there. But I, w- you guys have restored the Blazers to prominence. Mark, who gets the credit for that in your mind? Not credit per se, but how did you do it? Because there were some lean years, but the good times are back. Well, obviously you got to you got to draft players, and and um, you know. Uh, that's the, that's the most important thing, and and uh, you know obviously my brother was a big part of that. He's no longer with the team, but uh, the new scouting staff now uh, that came on board a year ago um, as well. But my brother Matthew was uh, was instrumental in, in the players we have and, and moving forward. Um, you know, so it's uh, you know that's where it starts. Matt Barkley came in. Uh, you know, obviously, Stu McGregor was a was an important piece of that as well. Uh, you know, and now Matt Bardsley, the lead general manager, is doing a terrific job. Um, you know, uh, doing all that, and then Clouston, uh, our head coach, and him and his brother come in, and, and they've just done a terrific job. And it's been, it's been uh, really fun to see. I got to you know, spend some time this summer with uh, with the coach, and, and I really liked, uh, you know, what he brings, and, and excited for the future with the, with this team because we're we're actually just. This was a good year. Next year, we thought we were going to be even better. So, you know, I just think it's just going to keep. You know, we get, we got a good window here right now, and and hopefully we can just keep uh, keep this uh, thing going in the right direction. Mark Recky is with us, and here's the beautiful thing about this show, Mark, is the interaction of our viewers. Uh, they can't see you, but they can hear you. Todd Holt is watching. He's written in Swift Current Broncos all-time leading scorer. He says, I was on the bench in Kamloops when we played Swift versus the Loops the night the Blazers retired Mark's jersey. Longest ceremony ever. He came in riding in a white limo. What do you remember about that night, Mark? Oh yeah, that was yeah, that was a god. That was a long time ago, but yeah, it was a pretty obviously a pretty special night. It's my hometown, and and uh, you know being able to just get to play there, and and it just uh, you know it's such a special night, and yeah, it was quite a long night. Felt bad for the uh, felt bad for the players, but uh, you know it was really an honor and special thing to have my my number up there, and and uh, you know in, in the, the city I grew up in. Let me ask you this, just a couple uh, last questions. A lot of NHL players could own junior teams or part of junior teams, but not that many do. Um, what made you want to do it, and and what do you love about it the most? Well, I just love it. I mean, it's, it's you know, I, I grew up with Camus Junior Oilers, Camus Blazers, you know, they, they, you know, I was just, I wanted to be one of them, and, and uh, you know, I, and to to be you know obviously an owner in in my hometown and and be getting the opportunity to do that it's something I just I wanted to do and and uh, as well as uh, Shane Doan and Jerome McGinley and Daryl Sador and you know we really wanted to give back it, it was special times for us uh, playing in Kamloops and and the opportunity to try and give these young guys that opportunity and, and give the city of Kamloops uh, some good teams and and uh, you know we're finally back to where we want to be and. And, uh, you know, we're just, we got to, we want that culture to be like, like these kids come out of here. They come in as young men and, and, you know, they leave as men, you know, and, 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 you know, I think it's just a special time for every kid. It is very special. That's why we all love uh, junior hockey here. And, and lastly, Mark, of, of, of your accomplishments, and I got them in front of me, five Stanley Cups, of course, uh, all the NHL all-star games, six or seven of them, um, World Championships, obviously gold there. The Hockey Hall of Fame in 2017. Where does that rate of all the things, Mark? Well, that, that's that's the icing of the cake. I mean, you know, you never, you know, I never expected to even, you know, I was hoping I could play three, four, five years in the NHL and then, you know, to play 20 years, 20 plus years. And then, you know, to get that opportunity and, and be in with the players that I watched growing up and, and, uh, you know, the players I idolized and, and then I got the opportunity to play with some special ones. And it just, it, that was the icing on the cake. And it was like, I, you know, if I didn't get in, I still had a great career. And, but to be able to get that honor and, and to be, you know, alongside all the guys that uh, paved the way for us, is, uh, it, it's just incredible. It really is. Well, there's absolutely no doubt you wouldn't have lasted uh, this long without being a good guy, too. I, I appreciate the time, Mark. Thanks so much, and good luck getting back on the ice. Stay safe and all the rest. Thanks. You, you guys as well. We appreciate you having me on. Thank you. 
Mark Recchi of the Pittsburgh Penguins joining us. You're watching Rod Peterson On Demand. For more of The Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.